wa kurugenzi the year 1914 kuna war ilikuwa inaendelea worldwide this was the first world war it last from 1914 to 1918 somewhere in the middle of the war the british walikuwa washaingia europe kule wana try maze ku take over from the germans ju germans huko walikuwa nasumbua deadly so kuna area fulani maze british walikuwa wame take cover wamechimba trenches pale kuna a british soldier ako pale maze ana stand guard ame point rifle yake mahali kwa miti huko in the tree line then akiwa amebanga hizo tu hapo maze ako on high alert akasikia kuna some disturbances natoka kwa miti pande ile so of course aka, akashika mambo yake sasa maze ako tayari jo kulipua hii kitu kidogo kidogo from the tree line anaona mjamaa na kam hii time kuna giza kidogo so haoni fiti but jamaa anastaga anastaga anakuja the more anakaribia the more the british soldier ana realize oh my god this is the enemy ujamaa amevaa german uniform so uni mse nafani huyu nafaa anafaa fraye so jamaa ana approach ana approach ana approach is staggering so the more ana approach the british uh, soldier ana discover wait i think ujamaa ameumia itakuwaaje maze ni kiblast mtu tayari asha asha umia so the german soldier staggers staggers ana kama nafika sasa like literally 30 meters 30 meters ni kama hapa na maybe mbele ya hiyo front of house pale kidogo then ana discover wait a minute anaangalia around ana discover kuna trenches pale mbele na soldier anajua anytime unaona two trenches we jua uko within enemy territory so the german in am hit ah oh, my god i think ni meblanda hapa nimeingia kwa the brits mambo yangu imeisha na by the way true to his word akiangalia mbele akaona the german the british soldier am point rifle yake kwake ready to pull the trigger so they look at each other for like a good 30 seconds then all of a sudden the british soldier ana drop weapon yake na anaangalia german so the german turns and starts walking away akipiga tu maombi yake mzee hope mse amenipatia another lease of life mzee and he walks and walks and walks and he disappears into the tree lines na anaenda kabisa wadao the german soldier mwenye alikuwa just about to eat a british bullet was none other than adolf hitler had the soldier squeezed that trigger 20 years later more than 6 million jews are wange dead but ju brito mazali amwacha nipatie mtu moja lisi ya maisha wengine milioni sita walienda man coincidence eh? <sighs> such is life katule wa shaita vizuri sasa nipige story hapa watu washangae species twende kaz yani a whole auditorium ina join introduction yangu yote you guys nyinyi amuogopi mimba nyinyi yeah. <laughs> oh my god um episode 11 headline hitters kama k na mkiwa na mkurugenzi bana amepiga black and white wa 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 kwa kurugenzi mmenichanganya haki mmenichanganya Aki ni white and grey. Hiyo joke hata iwezi enda mahali. Tuachane nayo hapo. Nataka <laughs> niwapeleke mwaka wa 2002. Hey, hapa itabidi tukue na daftari. Mmekuja na notebooks? Sababu ile physics iko kwa hiki pindi. Ai 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 ai. Hapa hapa itabidi. So wadau 
in a country called Russia. There's a small town in Aitwa Yufa. So pale Yufa kuna wanafunzi walikuwa very talented, gifted kids. Serikali wakasema hawa watoto bana wana to make proud as a town. Kulikuwa na painters, kulikuwa na athletes, kulikuwa na yani all sorts of talented kids. So the town ikaamua hawa watoto sababu wana to make proud maze as a town, wacha sisi kama serikali tuwapatie trip. Waende mpaka Spain, Barcelona. Waende tu wa enjoy manze. Unajua mume kwa mkifanya kazi safi sana little ones. So wacha sisi kama town turudishe mkono. Kimbieni Barcelona. Eh angalieni bwa Wahispaniolo wanaendeleza nini huko. Eh alafu mkuje hapa mkuwe motivated, mpate motivation ya kusukuma hii kitu. So ikakuwa sawa na town ika select uh, very gifted kids. I think there were about uh, 70 of them. Na ikakuwa ni all expenses paid wanafaa changamke waende wapi waende Barcelona so siku ikafika wanafunzi wakakutana pale eh, pick up point wakaingia eh, gari ya moshi town kumbuka inaitwa Yufa wakapanda train pale Yufa inakimbia teketeke mpaka wapi capital city ya Russia which is Moscow naona geography yenu iko sawa so wakafika Moscow pale wanataka waingie airport waabiri ndege waelekee zao Barcelona ah kidogo wanafika huko wanapata bountiful ya safari si ya huko maze aki imegonga blanda aya ya 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 wanauliza wait a minute mlikuwa aki na mlikuwa msafiri leo oh my god aki hiyo ndege imeenda aki imeenda imagine sweetie imeenda it's gone it's gone so akaambiwa aki sijui mtanichukulia aje lakini tafadhali in two days tutakuwa tumetafuta ndege ingine ya kuafikisha barcelona we promise Mnaweza tupatie siku mbili tuchangamke. So, wasa kona. Ah, since tuna operate hapa na pesa ya serikali. Na serikali imesema inaweza tushikia hata ka hoteli hapa Moscow, tubangaize two days, tukiangalia mandhari ya Moscow. Ah, kwani kuna shida? Hakuna shida. Si tubangaize. So, ya, yeah, waka waka Mosa, wacha tukae, wakapiga two days pale Moscow, ndege ikapatikana. Russians wako na ndege fulani inajiita Tupolev. So wakapata Tupolev fulani hapo inabeba capacity ya watu kama 96 hivi. E, wanafunzi walikuwa kama sab- sabini na kitu, guardians kadhaa, e, think walimu kadhaa na a f- just a few passengers. Wenye si hawakuwa part, part of the kikosi yote. So ndege ikapatikana, ikakuwa sasa sawa twendeni tuabiri hii mashini, e, tuelekeze tu wapi? Barcelona. Nataka nitaenda nikiwapima mpaka mwisho nione kama mko rada waelekee Barcelona na wakaingia wakatulia fiti wakastrap mishipi yao sasa sawa e, ikafika wakati wa take off na species utafanya hiyo kitu eh ndege ika take off hapa tuko Moscow Russia kula pause toka ro- wewe toka Moscow wewe toka twende wapi twende Italy Italy kuna town inaitwa Bagamo pale Bagamo kuna airport iko pale na kuna ndege aina ya Boeing iko pale 767 hii Boeing inaoniwa na company eh, inaitwa DHL tunajua DHL eh? kama umeenda hata JKIA niko sure umeona ndege za DHL hapo so kuna 767 iko pale eh, DHL eh, carrier ina inafai safirishe mizigo inatoka town pale Italy inaitwa Bagamo inaenda Brussels Brussels ni capital ya wapi wa kurugenzi ya yeah, Belgium. Ai, kwani hii selection ilikuwa tu ni watu chopi? Hey, hey, iko tu sawa. So inafaa itoke bra- eh, Bagamo iende Brussels. So asiumini, najua hii si map, lakini asiumini hii ndio map. Just just assume, nataka tucheze na imagination, eh? So kwa hii map, eh, Barcelona iko mahali hapa. Sawa sawa. Hapa ni si Brazils Moscow very good so Barcelona iko hapa hapa ni Moscow sasa so hii ndege the Tupolev inafaa itoke hapa iende hapa sawa shuka hapa chini hapa hapa ni town inaitwa Bagamo iko wapi Italy hapa ni wapi Brazils Belgium sasa so unaona injia hivi na hii hapa kuna kutakuwa na meeting point. Hii meeting point iko right above Switzerland. Hapa tu juu. Na ukitoka Switzerland ukiingia hapa juu 
umeingia southern part of Germany. So hapa southern part of Germany kuna town inaitwa Ubelinga. So Ubelinga tukitoka na constant speed kutoka Moscow tukienda hapa na tuto, mwingine atoke Palamo akuje hapa kama ulisoma hesabu sana sana wata meet pale Ubelinga sasawa. So Ubelinga despite the fact that iko in German territory ile the air traffic controllers ambao wana man area wako hapa Switzerland. So wako na hiyo jurisdiction yote. So anything iki happen wako rada. Sasawa. Mpaka hapo tuko fiti. Haya, wacha tuongee juu ya crew kidogo tu. The DHL iko na crew wawili. Captain wake first officer. It's a Boeing 767 inabeba mizigo. Hakuna kazi nyingi. Wewe safirisha mizigo wewe. Mnahitaji watu 15 kusafirisha mizigo ya kazi gani? Wewe peleka mizigo. Kuja hapa kwa hii polevu. It's a Russian plane. Hii tupo level wameamua kama mbaya mbaya tunaweka watu kwa hiyo cockpit mtatii. Imebeba wanafunzi huko na watu wengine kadhaa but pale ndani ya cockpit kuna watu watano. Five. There's the captain mwenye yako in charge of the plane. Huyu captain leo ametembelewa na supervisor. Uh, tumuite supervisor eh wacha tumuite supervisor. Kazi yake tu ni kukaa mkuangalia. Wacha twende hii trip na nyinyi nione kama mnafuataga procedures nini nini. Ah unajua for safety. Sasa So ideally the first officer ndio anafaa kae kwa hiyo kiti supervisor amekalia. Lakini sababu supervisor ni don first officer hezi kuja hapo kumwambia eh hey, gadhe hiyo ni kiti yangu. No 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 no. Hapa nyuma ya kuna kitu inaitwa jump seat. Jump seat ni kiti fulani inakuaga tu imewekelewa hapo wewe kama una nafasi pale kwa cockpit wewe kaa hapa. So hapo kwa jump seat first officer ameketi hapo. Haya, hao ni watatu. Kuna jamaa anaitwa flight navigator. So flight navigator wadau yeye ndio anahakikisha hii route tunatumia ndio hii eh wacha niweke ma bearings vizuri ndio tusipotee tuende mpaka mahali tunafaa tufike in short twende tufike destination <laughs> So navigator ako hapo na unajua ndege si kama maranava ndege si kama zile taksido za gedhurai <laughs> ulikuwa unafaa uende Somalia ujipate Cameroon uweze fungua dirisha kwa ndege oya agave nilikuwa naelekea hapana Lazima mtu wako wa navigation afanye mambo yake sasawa. So huyo ni number four. then number five ni flight engineer. Flight engineer kazi yake ni hiyo, ni engineer. Kazi yake ni kuhakikisha mitambo iko sawa, iko sawa. So in terms of personnel sit fit. Very good. Tumeongea juu ya ndege mbili, personnel wao wote. So nataka tuende kwa jambo moja la mwisho. Ndio sasa story yetu ikikof. I swear. Najua sasa hii muna feel mpatiwe tu uniform pale KAA, muingie airport cars. You know these things now. So the last person I'm going to talk about actually the second last the second last Pale Ubelinga si tumesema ni Germany hapa chini ni Switzerland eh? kuna air traffic control iko hapo na ule mwenye ameketi pale anaitwa nini air traffic controller <laughs> ye kazi yake ni kuhakikisha mandege ziko sasa ziko sasa kijana mdogo sana anaitwa Peter Nielsen ako pale ana man eh, station vile inafaa So by the time eh, story yangu sasa ina ina ina, ina shika fiti ni usiku ni night time. So hawa ATC walikuwa natusheria tu auto. Unajua kila ofisi sina kuaga tu na natusheria tu wake. Sasa hii ATC yao walikuwa wamesema okay, cheki tuko air traffic controllers wawili. Sasa ni usiku. Kuna haja tukae macho watu wawili haki shwali. Si, si wache mimi nilale wewe sikuma night shift then kesho tukikutana night shift wewe lala mini siku mini siku ume sio kitu inaisha hii kitu ai technology may come this is 2002 radar technology iko sawa so ukiwa peke yako unaweza navigate unaweza fanya fanya mambo hapa so peter nilsen akaambia rafiki yake no worries unataka kulala worry no more you know why <laughs> waenda usingizi kwani iko nini enda lala enda lala so peter nilsen amebaki pale amesha release tu Jamaa hivi <laughs> watu wa maintenance wanakuja. Eh, habari Nilsen uko sasa? Eh, ah, ulikuwa umeambiwa tunakuja maintenance. Ukuambiwa? Ah, makosa ni yetu. Ay 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 ay. Okay, fanya hivi eh. Hii radar system tunataka tuishughulikie kidogo tu. Accuracy one vibaya. Tunataka tupige kitu chap chap tumalize itarudi back to normal in a few. So kile tutafanya utaoperate on uh, kuna card design wanaita. Basically unaoperate tu na, na settings kiasi but si noma unaweza operate. Ni vile tu kuna tu vitu kadhaa itakunyima but ukiwa rada haifai kuwa cause of alarm. So 
ile itwa fall back mode wacha tu operate on fall back mode twende to fix hizi vitu kiasi kiasi then turudishe uendele na kazi ah nilsen akaona aina mambo you do your thing fanya mambo yako kidogo wakarudi wakamwambia ah, ah, ah. tulikuwa tumekwambia pia simu tunataka kutengeneza atakuwa tumekwambia ah makosa ni yetu cheki wacha tu hizi simu zako operate tu na ile moja ya backup hizi zingine wacha tu, tuzime kidogo tuzifanyie one to one to ni maintenance eh then after some time itarudi sasa waendelea na kazi yako sasa sasa twende kazi huyo ni Peter Nielsen turudi pale kwa ile ndege ya Tupolev tuongee juu ya the final people si tumesema hapa watu ni wanafunzi very young kids 9 years 10 years 11 12 13 i think the oldest alikuwa ka 16 wameenda na walimu na a few guardians hapa na pale lakini kuna a group of passengers ambao hawakuwa na hawa au walikuwa kivyao it's a family ya jamaa anaitwa Khaloyev Khaloyev alikuwa anaishi kule Moscow kule Russia lakini alikuwa ga, uh, kazi wapi Barcelona so the Khaloyevs walikuwa wanatoka hapa Moscow waende Barcelona kusalimia baba sababu baba ako kazi huko hawa wako na watoto hawa wako kivyao it's a mother eh, a pretty son tunpatie kama miaka moja hivi and a very um, young beautiful girl uh, i think alikuwa 4 years wako pale wametulia tupo levi kosa sawa wameshika nini wamekwe wamekwenda kufika hapo wakurugenzi si tuko sawa kila mtu wako airborne sasa tupo levi wako juu DHL iko juu sio sipita nielsen ako kazi pale amenyang'anywa mashini kidogo lakini asi ana operate ah bas sasa si si twende barcelona bas na wenye tunaenda brazils twende brazils ah si twende bas <laughs> mungu anakuaga na mambo yake lakini timing ya shetani immediately immediately wale watu wa maintenance wameenda wamefanya disconnection pale kwa simu wameenda wame disconnect vitu pale kwa radar sasa ana operate on fall back mode wale wa Russia eh, Tupolev wamekuja Ime, tumeenda sana wamekuja sasa wameanza kuingia within range ya airspace the southern german airspace wale watu wangu wa DHL wamesha toka Bagamo pale wanaelekea Brussels washaanza kukaribia Ubelenga Southern Germany washaanza kukaribia sasa kuna shida wadau hawa watu wote wako on the same altitude so let me ask kama hii barabara mnapitia iko na meeting point na nyinyi wote mko on the same altitude what happens inakuwa nini crash sisi ambao tumefanya aviation tunaita mid air collision <laughs> lakini hakuna wow wow sababu gani ndege iko equipped ndege iko equipped so tutoe vitabu za physics ni wasomeshe kitu kwa ndege kuna kitu inaitwa TCAS TCAS ni short for uh, traffic collision avoidance system so how TCAS operates ni kila ndege iko na kitu inaitwa um, inaitwa ni ah no physics siniangushe hapa na vile nimewaivia transponders wewe kila ndege iko na kitu inaitwa transponder so hii transponder ina send signals unaona so tupolev ikiwa hapa iki send signals through transponder dhl iko na signal zake pia ina send through transponder hizi transponders zikikutana zina communicate So let me tell you how they avoid um, an air collision. Okay, sita so going to the physics bit, but nitawaelezea Kileiman, sawa sawa. So transponder ya Tupolev ikikutana na transponder ya DHL, transponder ya Tupolev inauliza, "Awo! Rada! <laughs> Unakamatia wapi Buda? <laughs> Unakamatia chini? Wacha mimi nikamatie juu. Awo lan." Hivyo ndio zina operate. Sasa simmeelewa. Ile siku mtajipata kwa class ya aviation, mwambiwe please, please explain tickers. The first statement is Awo. 
So machine ya fail, machine iko kazi mbaya. DHL ikiwa inakuja sana, transponder ikafanya ile kitu. Ika discover kuna tupo leave in a So kidogo kidogo kuna ta ni quick quick transponder inakuaje na kama hivyo unakamatia chini unakamatia juu a uh, transponder isa nyingine ikasema nakamatia juu so ikabidi DHL ikamatia wapi chini so what does it do it sends a signal to the pilots inawaambia tikas descend so wakati unasukuma ndege yako pale uanze kusikia sauti hapa tikas descend tikas descend inakuambia there is traffic somewhere along the path so to avoid your traffic descend which is exactly what the DHL pilots do they descend wakishuka pale chini huo ndio wakati tikas imefufuka huku kwa tupolev si pale ishaambia huyu descend so automatically tipa, uh, tikas ya tupolev inafaiwaambia Although kwa ndege wanasemaga climb. <laughs> But sababu nyinyi ni good students mnapata half max, half max. So tikas climb, climb, climb. <laughs> Before your time yote ifike. Turudi pale kwa Peter Nielsen, ako kwa ATC controls, amewachwa na mashini iko full back mode, simu zake zimekatwa. Kuna ndege ya tourist ambayo ni Airbus inataka kuingia short final. Short final ni sasa ile the last moment before landing. So Airbus inaingia short final. Wanapiga simu pale kwa Nielsen. Oh, ayo we nani? Tunaingia hapa bana. Kama utusaidi, kama utusaidie. So Nielsen si na screens mbili hapa. Anatoka hapa, anakuja hapa, anaanza ku deal na nani? Na Airbus ambayo inakuja ku kuland. Kidogo kidogo Tupolev ya Warusi inasukuma ujumbe. Oya oya ni aje ATC kama hivi kiasi utusaidi, utusaidie. So anawachana na Airbus, anarudi ika mambo, anaambia wasi wa Tupolev ni aje ni aje. E, tunaweza climb uh, altitude flight anaambia okay, tulia kiasi. Kuna kuna ndege iko on short final hapa. Wacha ni malizane na tu, one minute, one minute I, I promise I'll be back. Sasawa, sasawa. Akienda kurudi hapa kwa Airbus, kuna Thai Airlines imewasili, imekaa. Ana okay. Okay, sasa hapa kuna Airbus inataka kuland, kuna Thai Air iko mahali, wa Russia wananiuliza maswali. So ikakuwa hapa eh, atuna mikono 15, so kile nitafanya, wacha nipige simu ni, ni dispatch e Airbus kwa another air traffic controller. So wanachukua simu, di di di. Si nakumbuka ni kwa nini. Watu wa maintenance walifanya nini? Anarudisha chini. Anarudi hapa kwa Thai Airlines anawaambia cheki nipatieni tu dakika moja kuna Airbus iko mahali iko on short final nikimalizana nao nitarudi kwako anaenda pale kwa Warusi anawaambia bado mko sawa maintain nini altitude na kam na kam nao 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 so anasukuma hapa tena kwa hii nyingine anaambia wasi wa Airbus cheki we need to get you down as quick as possible sababu kuna ndege kama 15 zinaningojea hapa na niko peke yangu na need to dispatch hizi ndege kwa wase wengine siwezi sababu simu zangu zimekatwa so anatulia na wase mpaka wakati wanafanya nini wana touch down as in happen rudi hapa tupolev na dhl boeing washaingia the 2 minute mark meaning in the next 2 minutes tusipofanya kitu kuna watu watafurahia so peter nielsen ako busy sana na hii airbus ile samoi shengia the 2 minute mark so sasa transponders ziko kazi yo 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 buda eh climb yo buda descend climb descend climb descend so wa, warusi wako hapa russians wana, okay okay sawa na, naona tika simeanza kuniwon inaniambia ni climb eh wacha tu ligonge peter nielsen once 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 nimuulize tu ni, nikacheze aje hapa before hata warusi wapige hii simu peter nielsen ashamalizana na nani na airbus wale watai walijipanga sasa tunataka tu deal na DHL na, na Tupolev zisikusikwe na ngori anarudi hapa kuangalia sasa warusi wamefika wapi my friend anapata washaingia hata sasa si, si two minutes like crash iko in the next like one minute ako na less than 60 seconds ya kuavati ngori yote so anaingia hivi kwa screen ana realize oh my god hapa ni noma ah, so anaenda kugongana jo ini ini tricky lazima nifanye kitu hapa so ana call wa Russia unajua sasa ame panic jo aso anaenda kugongana maze anawaambia yo wadau descend immediately 
Kumbukeni tickers. Imeambia DHL descend. So tickers inafaa yaambia watu nini? Climb. Which is exactly what tickers did. Tickers ilikuwa inaambia wa Russia climb. We, ongeza altitude brother panda. But huyu Nielsen jo amekuja amepanic ameona watu wana nini? Anawaambia descend. So kukakuwa kuna mtafaruku. Cockpit iko na watu watano wanajiuliza okay. Tickers inatuambia tupande. Peter Nielsen anasema tushuke bro. Tufanye nini? So akasema at any given time we trust to binadamu. Umse wa tickers, I mean umse wa uh, air traffic control. Maybe kuna kitu wameona sisi instrument zetu azio azioni. So we skiza tu ujamaa. So they descend. What they did not know is that now they were both flying at the same altitude na the DHL that was going to Brussels. Wacha tickers ianze kupiga kelele my friend. Climb, 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 climb. Warashia wanashindwa yo form. Nani amesema to descend so tuko sawa. The last minute. Jamaa moja hapo jua kwa tano akasema hapana. Hiki tu haiwezi piga kelele hivi for nothing. Imeona kuna there's traffic ahead. Let's just follow its instructions. Kama imesema to climb, we climb maze. So akasema okay. Sasawa. I think yeah, tuwezi bishana na hii mashini vile inapiga kelele wacha tu tupande mara mo, mara moja. Even before maze wa lift to your yoke. Wanaangalia tu from unajua sasa hapa ah bana mna operate in seconds so mko within uh, visible distance. Maze wanaona DHL imekam kukam. Na mnajua ndege yenda gi speed ya nduvi? Hiyo <laughs> kitu inaenda my friend. Hiyo kitu inapiga hata 1000 kph. U inaenda. Yo, uko na like window ya 2 seconds kwa just. Other is in 2 seconds kwa just na kitu iko within visible distance we pole mambo yako kuisha. So wana discover pale DHL wana realize oh my god ile ni tupo ile viko pale mbele yetu maze. So twende tuliambiwa to descend to descend even further maze. twende chini so maze wana push yoke chini no in a deep wanaanza ku descend but maze yo 1000 kilometers per hour maze. so both body and ndege inaitwa fuselage <laughs> so fuselage zilikuja zikapitana DHL ika manage kupita chini yani by just a fraction yani ilipita tu hapa lakini wadau si mnajua ndege iko na tail hata ufanye namna gani mtu wangu ile tail by the way ushaona haiti hiyo kitu si mchezo si mchezo so despite the fact that maze fuselage zili hatana ile tail ya DHL ilikuja kama panga like it literally slashed the tupolev into two tupolev ikalini into pieces yani it was chaotic wase so, wakakuwa sucked out sasa DHL bado iko airborne lakini haina tail kama umefanya physics kidogo unajua for you to be airborne unahitaji wings zako na unahitaji your tail so bila tail hakuna mahali wanaenda wale manage to ku remain afloat for some time wakaenda waka crash oh, ah, oi We? Mukurugenzi Opio in the building. We? Waka class. He? Okay. Wacha turudi. Ah, na vile tulikuwa kwa climax. So yeah, ika kondo hivyo maze tupo level maze iko in bits. Ime sambaratika kila mahali. Eh, the DHL ikaenda maze ikaanguka mahali kwa vichaka. So obviously sababu wali crash uh, in Ubelenga in Germany huko ndio waliangukia maze. DHL I think ilienda ikaanguka kando ya uwanja ya shule. Shule fulani ya watu wako differently abled. Ikaanguka huko. Ingine maze pieces. Yaani wase nasikia watu hii walikuwa wamesikata kila mahali maze bodies. Of course nobody survived. Not even a single person survived from both aircrafts. At that particular time. Pale chini Switzerland. Peter Nielsen ako kwa screen. Kuna kuoga na, na, na vitu tuna kila ndege na kuoga na identity. Anytime uko kwa hiyo screen, alafu uone hizo nini zimevanish kwa radar. 
my friend you have lost aircraft na hakuna kitu mbaya kwa a traffic controller kama kupoteza aircraft hiyo kitu you wamaliza in fact kwa most crashes the ATCs ambao wanaweza kwa walichangia hii crash 99% warudingi job si ati kufutu ama nini like uh, mwili yao haiwezi kubali hiyo it's too much it's too much okay imagine mazee nimeua watu 300 it's it's too much so mzee peter nilsen ako hapo kwa kiti anaangalia screen yake in disbelief mzee zile blink nini za kublink hakuna it's gone ule mjamaa alikuwa ameenda kudoze mzee ameamka amekaa anashindwa ni nini mbaya napata nilsen mzee analia yani kama mtoi amepoteza ndege mbili mzee it was just horrible so of course mzee authorities wakajulishwa ni nini wasa wakamwagika kule kwa ground wakaenda mzee waka verify wako ya ukweli tu pole vimeenda DHL imeenda everybody on board gone so nilsen mzee anaenda mtaa anabangaiza he is not okay hayuko sawa ako depression ina mwai lakini mzee ngori ni ngori lazima tu investigate mzee tukikupata kwa ngori tunakusukuma ndani unapoteza aje ndege mbili bro so investigation inaanza mzee investigation inaanza so sasa ma, report zinaanza kutokea pole pole mzee mbona uja mawa ATC hakuwa vati situation mzee uko na reda hapo unaona hizi ndege vile zinakuja unangoja aje mpaka ndege mbili zinagongana mzee so kila mtu anarusha fire huko wasi wengine wakageuzia the russian pilots wakasema russian pilots ni kama walikuwa wamepatiwa instructions but ha, wali take time kufuata but you don't understand maze hapa wamewekwa kwa situation tricky etc wanawaambia one thing tikas inawaambia a different thing hata kama ni wewe maze itakuchanganya so ikakuwa ni noma maze but wase wa mededi watu hiyo wameenda yani ilikuwa tu ni noma kuna jamaa niliwaambia mshikilie story yake anaitwa Kaloyev mnakumbuka Kaloyev Kaloyev ako na familia ya bibi mtoto wa kiume na mtoto wa kike wanafaa watoke wapi pale Moscow wakuje kumtembelea Barcelona anaamka asubuhi aki anaona news ile eh, tail tail fin ya Tupolev aki aki ndio hii family yangu ilikuwa hapa so anapiga masimu mbio mbio anagundua yo mzee wale wase wali dedi wote hakuna msani make family yake yote gone huyo inamwaribikia kabisa una imagine mzee wewe ni mzazi family yako yote iko kwa ndege kidogo unaambiwa wako. Yaani umeanza zero. Wewe na mkijana wa university no difference. Am. Hakuna kitu mumefanya kwa hii dunia. Hata kuna vijana wa university angalau wamepeana peana tu mimba hapa nje. Yeye amerudi scratch. So mzee inakuwa very painful for him. Of course investigation huko inaendelea. Na investigations za walami zinakuwa very thorough. Hakuna ku jump into conclusions. Ah uh-uh. It a take two years wacha tuende two years tujue ni nini exactly ili cause kitu so investigations zinaendelea huyu mzee kaloeva na your time man mnataka kujua ni nini mzee imefanya saa hii sina familia so mzee anarudi pale mta eh, no anaenda Switzerland juu hapa ATC alikuwa wa Switzerland so anaingia huko na pia Switzerland ilikuwa inasaidia sana na investigation so mzee anapiga mawantu 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 after one year Kaloev discovers that kuna jamaa anaitwa Peter Nilsen alikuwa pale amekalia kiti kwa ATC aka watch ndege mbili zikigongana kwa hewa na zikaanguka akapiga investigation akajua mahali Peter Nilsen anaishi katoka kijani fiti amejiami poa ana, ana, ana pressure na mtu akaingia mpaka kule eh, Switzerland akaenda mazee akafika kwa keja aka knock mlango Peter Nilsen akafungua mzee akamwambia ni aje kama hivi tubonge kiasi akatoa picha kwa mfuko akamwekea kwa uso picha ilikuwa ya wife the son and the daughter akawasho mzee juu ya blanda yako hawa toi ya wako sina wife sababu ulishindwa kumakinika kwa kazi jam akatoa pen knife sham ikachomo proceeded to stab him several times akamwacha hapo aki bleed akaweka picha zake kwa mfuko na akachana mbuga akaishia actually that was two years later iko imefika 2 years po one and something one, one, one year 10 months immediately peter nilsen is murdered by kaloev wa germany wanatoa ripoti ya kuonyesha hii ndege ilianguka namna gani kwa hiyo ripoti wana discover the people to blame ni the air traffic company not the controller 
the company ambayo ilikubali A wase kwenda kulalanga wakati mnafaa kuwa kwa kazi B kufanyia mashini maintenance wakati ziko katikati ya kazi C kukata communication wakati mko katikati ya kazi na nyinyi ni ATC sasa ATC bila comms tunafanya kazi gani what are we doing so hiyo ndio company ilikuwa liable for everything that happened but too late Nelson alikuwa shakula visu maze akadedi by the time wanagundua ilikuwa imeisha of course Kaloev alichukuliwa mazee akapelekwa kwanza hosi wa pime pime waone kama ako sawa of course ayuko sawa umepota za wife na watu wawili bro hauko sawa so i don't know siko sure kama wali msukuma ndani but i think walimwachilia juu yenyewe hiyo unaelewa tu kitu kama ya, ni mbaya ilienda hivyo but man kuna wase hawajui ku handle pain kama hiyo mazee so i guess walimwachilia Peter Nielsen akazikwa kuna memorial ya wase wote wenye walidedi both in Germany na in Russia. Ah, kuna mtu ukumbuka watu wa DHL kwa nini jo? Ama ni juu walikuwa tu wawili. Ah, yo, yo sad. Tukienda Italy, wakurugenzi tukienda Italy tujaribu tutafute nini tu watengeneze ka memorial kazuri. Yeah, so kuna <laughs> <laughs> so kuna hiyo nini yao iko mpaka leo wasee waga wanaenda kupe tributes juu alipoteza very promising kid unajua hawa tu walikuwa the best of the best like the best of the best hiyo ni generation sasa imeenda kwa hiyo town juu alienda kwa hiyo town wakiangalia nani mdeadly nani mdeadly nani mdeadly wakawachukua wote wakawasafirisha gone but wanasemaga maze maneno ya Mungu maze na kogafiti lakini timing ya shetani mare dadi maze na hiyo ndio story ya the Obelinga disaster ya 2002 kama uko na bundles kiasi kiasi ingia pale piga mazee research yako kuja hapa kwa comments vile si ufanya niambie zile vitu tunaweza kwa tuliacha to fry to learn sisi wote au si wakurugenzi na watambua sana imekuwa true deadly tuonane in a bit sasa peace